Hi everyone, this is Al McKay and I've got a brand new video tutorial I'm really excited to put out which is entirely focused around the plug-in optical flare. In this case, we're going to be using Nuke. And what we're going to be doing is not lens flares, which is typically what it's built around, but more creating or augmenting our lighting, creating kind of the, the lens contamination. In other words, more of a broader lens flare just to kind of really boost the, the lighting look uh, overall. So I think this is going to be fun rather than going for more of the coronas and all the other elements that build up a lens flare to create something that's just going to make or enhance the uh, the lighting that we have. So this is going to be a lot of fun and I'm really interested to see what you think of this and how you take it further. More importantly, like I said, we're going to use Nuke, but we're going to use the 3D area of Nuke. In other words, we're actually going to use 3D positional lights to be able to enhance this, which I think is going to be a lot of fun. Okay, so that's it. Let's dive in. Hi, this is Alan McKay and welcome to another video. This is one that I wanted to put out because I thought it'd be kind of interesting. I'm kind of late to the game in terms of using optical flares from Video Copilot, but recently I finally purchased the license and started going through it. And it's been a lot of fun just adding dynamic lens flares to shots and really enhancing everything as well. Now, rather than just adding lens flares, I thought this would be interesting more to be able to beef up the lights in an environment. So in this case, I had a 3D camera already tracked in a shot. So but because of that, I could already take this further and use that 3D data for a positioning of where my lights are, things like that. So this example is pretty straightforward, but fun where in 3D space, I'm gonna create a bunch of lights in Nuke and then use them to control the lens flare. So that way, all of the individual lights in this shot are able to get enhanced a little bit. So I'm not looking to get really crazy lens flares and coronas or anything like that at all, but more just enhance everything in here. And looking at what it looked like before, then adding these flares on top, it definitely adds to the shot. So I thought this would be fun to share. And I'm sure there's other training similar to this out there, but at the time I couldn't really find anything uh, good that covered this. So that's why I thought it'd be fun to share this. Okay, so let's dive in. Okay, so I've got this camera match move here. And what I thought would be cool is in comp to add lens flares to these lights. And that way it just kind of automatically um, creates some kind of flare around it, maybe a corona on the screen. Uh, based on like where the camera's moving and to do that automatically. So having a 3D match moved camera, I thought it'd be pretty straightforward if I wanted to just create some uh, null points just to kind of represent uh, where these lights are. So I'm just going to drop in some squares really quick. And I'm just going to move these into position. I need to scale them down a little bit. But just having something there that I can drop in. Obviously, um, if they're lens flares, they're not going to respect the objects. I'm just doing this as reference. So I'm going to need to find a frame where that other light is visible. So, you know, I won't spend much time on this. It's more just the concept that I want to showcase. But I'll get this one last one. Duplicate it over here. Okay, so I might spend a bit of time just match moving these, making sure that they are in in the correct spots. But um, overall, like the key thing is that I'm just going to export this out. Because again, having a 3D camera, it means I don't need to track anything. It's already done. So I'm just going to export this out as an Olympic. So I'm just going to say my light, uh, yeah, my lights, I should do whatever I want to call it. Alembic, save. And then have the animation just in case, but that should be it. Just going into Nuke now, and I want to use optic flares for this from Video Copilot. Uh, I just, <laughs> it's been out forever, but I just finally uh, bought a license earlier this week and I've been checking it out. It's, it's really cool. So I figured that could be work, it could work really well for this. So. What I might initially do is do a Kier light, sorry, Kier, um, plug this in, merge this on top, and I would just do a pre malt and a glow. So with the Kier, 
I would just do this specifically just to pull something like that, depending on how much I want to keep. And then do a pre-malt, just that way it pulls in that information. And that could do a bit of a glow on top. And then reintroduce that to get a little bit of flair. And that could just be kind of fun just to have something like that. Now, the critical part here is going to be um, that I, I want to bring in my Olympic cache. So doing a re-geo. So I'm just going to say create separate nodes. It's going to pull in a camera. It's going to pull in uh, these objects. So I've got, I had a sphere as well I had in there as well, but these three boxes represent the lights. So that's pretty much it. Uh, I just need to drop in a scene node, plug my camera in. And from there, it's pretty straightforward. I just need to load in optical flare, optical flares. So just connect this. Uh, the key thing is to set this to 3D and to plug that into the scene. Now, what I need to do at this point is, let's just go into, sorry, into 3D space for a second. Uh, you can see where these lights are. Now, what I want to do, and I'm sure there's probably an easy way to snap these into place if I exported nulls or something like that, but I'm just going to quickly drop in a light and plug this bad boy in. Oops, and um, I'm just going to manually move these into place. So that's why, I, like, I could just drop the camera in by itself, but I figure having those lights there that I uh, positioned in 3D, whatever it would be, this would just be a chance for me to um, use these as reference. So I'm just going to align these three really quickly. And because these are aligned, go 3D and let's just pick something in here. I'm just going to throw the tiny light in here. Hit OK. And let's make sure it's all the same resolution. OK, so that works pretty well. I'm just going to quickly adjust this really quick. But overall, all I've done is in 3D, I just exported out some positions of where I imagined these lights would fit. And from there, uh, because it's a 3D camera, there's now flares built up for these. And obviously these are a little intense, but you can get some kind of nice, subtle flare going on like that. So that's kind of what it looks like. And the cool thing is it just means that because I have a camera track, I can just throw it in and then whatever lights I choose, it's automatically going to create the flare. It's got a little corona, a little uh, uh, schmutz, like screen dirt, um, you know, defocusing on there. All of this comes in for free. And it means that, you know, camera pans up to the left. We get halo there. All this is automatically in there. I don't need to track it um, and track when they come on and off. It's all in 3D. So I thought that's kind of cool. Um, I, I saw in the documentation it touches on this, but I couldn't find anything that was really in-depth about it. So I just figured it might be fun to um, just at least showcase, like, how to, you know, quickly create some points in 3D space um, and then drop it all in here and just gonna get that kind of set up to work automatically. And there might be other material out there that's already covered this. Um, and if there's anyone who wants to elaborate on it, I'd love to hear your thoughts too. But again, just as a quick hack that kind of gives me some extra um, kind of atmosphere to my shot, it looks kind of neat. This is the finished effect, which is actually two lens flares. So that sphere that I had in the center, I just added a separate lens flare specifically for that. Um, but as you can see, we have the light flares, um, on each light. The cool thing was, I was also able to get the particle effect in the center and use that to occlude everything. So there's a lot of controls in there to do that as well. But yeah, I, you know, just for kind of slapping stuff together, um, I'm usually quite allergic to lens flares. I try and avoid, um, going overboard, but for this being more of a sci-fi feel, I kind of decided to go the other direction and go over the top, but it's kind of fun to utilize that and get something um, really intense, but you know, without having to manually uh, manage all that stuff. And again, going back to this version, like the subtlety of it is what I really like.
Okay, I hope you got a lot from this video. Like I said, it's a pretty straightforward approach, but I hadn't really seen anything else covering it that extensively, so I just thought it'd be fun to put something else out here based on my findings. Uh, so hopefully you get something from this. At the same time, I think that there's a lot of benefits to enhancing footage based on 3D positioning, so be able to just add or augment things where you need to. So again, this is utilizing lens flares, but at the same time you could use it in a lot of different ways as well. I didn't really get into matting things out in the foreground or using uh, it to control lens flares or anything like that, but you do get the, the general idea. Um, if you're interested in other tutorials and other training I'm putting out, simply go to alamckay.com uh, to check out or subscribe to my list as I put out a lot of private training on there. But otherwise, simply subscribe to my YouTube channel. I'm gonna be trying to put out a lot of regular content. Either way, I hope you got a lot from this and thanks for watching. And thanks for watching. Oh.